our big goal is to solve a linear system. That is to, to find values for the variables such that if you substitute those values in, then every single one of the equations is going to be simultaneously true. Now, if I have a relatively simple one, like what I have here, only two different equations and two different variables, we've probably seen in the past an ad hoc way to solve that. And I'm going to sort of quickly go through one of those now. So what I did here was first to note that I had a bunch of threes in the first equation. So I just divided them out and created this new equation here. And then I noticed if I, if I added that new equation to this equation two, that the X twos were going to cancel out and I would get this equation here. And then I could figure out the two values from that. Now this was fine in the two by two case. However, what happens if it was three variables and three equations or a hundred variables and 200 equations? At some point, this ad hoc method is going to be too cumbersome for us. So our goal is to take what we just did, translate it into a matrix form, and then do things to the matrix to get the same values. So what we've seen previously is that I can translate this system into this augmented matrix. 3, 3, 3, 1, minus 1, 0, and I'm going to put the dots to separate the coefficients on the left from the constant on the right. So now let me look at the step which was dividing the first row by three. So if I'm going to divide the first row by three, I just, well, do that. Every time that there's a three, it goes down to a one. So one, 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 one minus one, zero. This step here is dividing my first row by three. Then in my ad hoc approach, my, my next one was to, to add this new thing that I just created, this, this new first row, and add that to the second row. So in other words, what I'm going to get is I don't change my first row at all. That remains one, one, one. I'm not changing that. But what I'm doing is I'm adding the first row to the second row. So my second row is changing. In other words, one plus one is two, one plus minus one is zero, and one plus zero is equal to one. And I'm going to adopt a little bit of a shorthand for what happened here. I'm going to say that row number two, that's the one that changed. It went to whatever the value of row one plus row two is. So that's going to be sort of my shorthand so I can keep track of what was going on here. So then what I did on the left was I used the second of these equations, that's corresponding to our second row, to evaluate that x1 had to be a half. But if I look down here at this bottom row, th this series of numbers, 2, 0, 1, is precisely corresponding to this equation, this linear equation, 2 times x1 plus 0 is equal to 1. And so from this, I can get the same value that x1 is equal to a half. So that tells me the, the first variable here. And then if I want to figure out the second, well, I can look at this top equation here. And this is going to be doing sort of basically what I have down here. This, this top equation reads x1 plus x2 is equal to 1. But if I know that my x1 is equal to a half, that's going to imply that my x2 must also be equal to the value of a half. And, and so I indeed get the same values that I had before. Now, this might not actually seem like I'm doing much. It, 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 it's really the exact same thing, but just a new notation. It's going to be the efficiency when these get really large and cumbersome, that's going to give us the benefit. And indeed, we're going to come up with a systematic method of how we do these manipulations on the right-hand side that's going to allow us to find these solutions to these systems if they exist. Now, as I was doing this, I did a bunch of different manipulations. But I can't just do any manipulation. I can't just sort of like, say, alternate the x1 or the x2. I can't just square stuff. I can't just do whatever I feel like. There's a couple different manipulations that I'm allowed to do that do not change the solutions. So to figure out, and I want to explicitly codify, what am I allowed to do algebraically here? What manipulations am I allowed to make to my matrices that do not change the solutions? It's going to turn out that we have three of these so-called EROs, these three elementary row operations. And the first of them was the first step that we just saw. Namely, I had my top row was an equation that had three different threes in it. 
And my first step was just to get rid of the threes to divide the entire top row by three. So dividing is the same thing as multiplying by one third. I can say that I can multiply a row by any value of k, but I have to be a little bit careful here, any value of k that's not equal to zero. If you think, if I was allowed to just always multiply every row by zero, it would just reduce every single system to the, to the zero system. But as long as I'm not doing that, and I'm still keeping the structure of this particular equation in place by multiplying by some scalar that's not zero, then I do not change my solutions. So the next rule that we used is that in my bottom row, I replace that bottom row with the sum of the first row and the second row. I had divided over by my three, and then I added two things together and wrote that in the place of my second row. So that's what I'm allowed to do. I can replace a row by the sum of it and another row. So that is also something that does not change the solution. I can add my two different rows together and I can put that in place of one of them and that's going to be perfectly fine. And if you combine one and two, I could also replace a particular row with a multiple of one row added to a multiple of another row. I've left them as two separate different things, but I combine these. It's not just simply adding them. I could also add a multiple of them. The third one we didn't use, but it's perfectly fine. I could interchange two different rows. It doesn't matter the order I put them in, so I can interchange them. Interchange two different rows. And this is going to be it. These are the three different rules that do not change your solution sets. Anything that doesn't change your solution set can be some combination of these three different rules, and things that aren't a combination of these three different rules are going to result in different types of solutions. So these are your three things that you're allowed to do that are safe bets that you can manipulate a system. Whether you write it in matrix notation or not, those are the same three steps either way. And we're going to use those to try to find out the solutions to linear systems.